first month. The first month of this year has not passed yet. <laughs> what is going on? How did Genshin Impact manage to lose over a million followers overnight? Just because of one sentence during a developer livestream. Virtually every content creator for Genshin or even the internet has covered this topic so far because it's that crazy. And the situation is not even close to being over. In fact, one could argue that it just keeps getting worse. Many have called it a spiritual successor to the first anniversary disaster of Genshin Impact, or even a distant cousin of the Honkai Impact 3rd Bunny Girl incident without any knives. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I sure do hope so. So what the hell is going on and why is it so significant? Well, just like any Genshin Impact controversy, it's not so simple. Let's check out why. Look, what you have to understand is that for Genshin Impact and its developer, Mihoyo, there are two dates every year that are extremely important. The first one is the anniversary on September 28th, which has already ended in catastrophe back in 2021 due to its importance. Players expect a lot and it's very easy to disappoint, especially when you don't learn from your mistakes. But the other extremely important date in the year is the Chinese Lunar Year, because Mihoyo is a Chinese company, but they also take it a step further. A huge chunk of Mihoyo's very impressive revenue that was more than PlayStation in 2022 comes from China. Each of their games usually has a world and they will have different regions. One of these regions will always be inspired by China. In Genshin Impact, this is Liyue. In Honkai Star Rail, it's the Xinxiu Luofo. Right? I said it correctly, right? <laughs> I hope so. This helps a lot with their reputation in China and of course leads to increased sales. But to say it's a double-edged sword is an understatement because some of their biggest controversies have come from these regions. One huge aspect of the Bunny Girl incident was because the Chinese mascot character of Honkai Impact 3rd was put in a bunny suit costume seen as something that foreigners fantasize about, making it seem like they were selling out China to the West just for fan service. And this resulted in someone going to the HQ of Miho trying to stab the CEO and jump off the building. <laughs> This was such a big issue, okay? And yes, we're, we're still talking about anime girls, okay? This was such a big issue that on that same year, Miho's CEO joined the Chinese Communist Party officially. Probably because he doesn't want to end up like Jack Ma from Alibaba. <laughs> And you had the Zhongli controversy. In Genshin Impact, he is the god of the Liyue region. He was long awaited and Chinese players in particular were very hyped for him. After his release, his kit was disappointing. But that's not the first time this happened in Genshin Impact history. In fact, it's happened recently. A character gets hyped, releases, dog shit gameplay. But with Zhongli, they did something that they have never ever done before or again. When Chinese players complained, they buffed him. Because this wasn't just about the game anymore. This was about Chinese pride. So yeah, this inclusion of Chinese culture does lead to more sales in their games. But they can also lead to way bigger problems. Due to this, they've never screwed up the Chinese Lunar New Year event. This is their most important, most sugar-coated, most exclusive, most high-budget event of the year. Every year. It's always gone well for both global and Chinese players up until now. <laughs> this is a special livestream that they do every year for Lunar New Year, done fully in Chinese and usually features the Miho development team for Genshin Impact, as well as the CEO himself. At 37.48 <laughs> was the sentence that ruined everything. And you can see everyone in the comments referencing that timestamp talking about it. Let's watch together. 为了感谢旅行者们在过去一年里的支持与陪伴，我们还将通过游戏内邮件的方式为旅行者们奉上三个纠缠之源。希望在这还。Dude, <笑> look at the comments. <笑> L plus ratio only three. What? <笑> the whole chat is going insane. This is on YouTube. This isn't even on the Chinese side, okay? So yes, three intertwined fates for three wonderful years together. One per year. 
I can't wait to reach 10 years so I can actually get a 10 pull. <laughs> now this isn't just significant because it's insultingly low as a reward for such prolonged loyalty. This is the equivalent of a doctor saving your life and you offering him two used condoms and a chocolate bar. It's like, dude, just say thank you and leave my fuck office. <laughs> like, I don't want this. And the reason for that is simple. Three years might not seem like a big deal, but to a gacha game, it is. Gacha games are not World of Warcraft. They're not MMOs. They're not here for more than five years. In fact, seasoned gacha players know very well that even though they're spending hundreds of dollars on a game, it could literally go offline one year from release date. And there's nothing they can do about it. Everything's gone forever. Now, there's no statistics or real sources on this, but most people agree that the average lifespan is five years for a gacha game. And the fact that this game has been around for three years and during those three years has only shown growth both in players and revenue literally printing money and for them to give out such an insultingly low reward is actually mind-blowing you need 90 intertwined fates to guarantee a five-star character what the hell am i gonna do with three realistically it's just three dog sh blue weapons okay maybe add a rain slasher to the mix even worse <laughs> One additional thing I didn't see many content creators mentioning when they were talking about this is how Chinese people are known to be huge on symbolism. Look, this lunar year is the year of the dragon. And Zhongli, the Archon, the god of Liyue, as I mentioned earlier, takes on the form of a dragon. <laughs> In Chinese culture, the dragon holds a significant place as an auspicious and extraordinary creature. Unparalleled in talent and excellence, it symbolizes power, nobility, honor, luck, and success. 2024 is forecasted to bring about opportunities, changes, and challenges. Oh yeah, it'll bring out challenges, all right. Bro, this is a year that happens every 12 years. And the Archon of Liyue happens to take on a dragon form as well. And so you're telling me that all the staff involved, the people sitting down, the people behind the camera, the script writers, everyone involved in this process, no one, not one person thought to themselves, wait, <laughs> wait, can we just step back for a second and not redo what we did on the first anniversary? <laughs> just like, maybe? That is what's so crazy here. So of course, after the live stream was done, all of a sudden you started seeing an influx of tweets on Twitter telling you about what was happening on the Chinese side of the internet. RYC came in and said, the global side of Genshin seems so peaceful, while on the Chinese side, you get to see their official account on Chinese TikTok drop from 11 million to 8.9 million followers in a day, still dropping in real time. Almost every player is criticizing Genshin. And so it has begun. By that time, everyone knew, oh sh and in every controversy, I'm just so impressed by how determined and united Chinese players are when it comes to companies pissing them the hell off. Like, just think about it. Walmart, tomorrow, an American company can come out and say, hey guys, you know what? Slavery wasn't so bad. <laughs> They're not gonna lose this many followers, okay? It just won't happen. Look, everyone out here talks about K-pop stands and Swifties and how much power they have when they're pissed at something, but the Chinese players, or just the Chinese netizens in general, nothing can really compare to them when they're pissed. Which is one of the many reasons why Mihoyo's biggest fear is pissing them off and will usually bow down, if they can, to apologize. So of course, it wasn't just Douyin that was affected, Chinese TikTok, many other things were affected too. Billy Billy, the Chinese equivalent of YouTube that also has an app store for games, was also affected with a barrage of one-star reviews, giving me the thousand-yard stare of Google Play back in 2021. Its rating dropped so low to 5.8 that, hey, soon enough, Tower of Fantasy might catch up. <laughs> As you can see, there's a lot of one-star reviews, two, three, one, all kind of talking. Look here. I'm a foreigner and I just read the news. If I'm not misunderstand, Hoiverse really planned on giving only three pulls for an anniversary of the year as a thank you. <laughs> it's very shady and even worse than its first anniversary disaster. And then they go on to kind of detail all their problems with the game. Let's translate this reply. I wonder what it is. Even though I have a score of 40 in English, I can understand your poor English. I'm speechless. <laughs> so overall, they were pissed. But you know, reviews are annoying. <laughs> However, for Chinese players, they're not impactful enough to incite change for a corporation. So they took it a step further. They started to threaten their business relationships and partnerships with other companies by going to their pages, commenting about how they're going to boycott the company if they don't stop collaborating with Genshin, 
and unfollowing them. These are companies as big as KFC, Pizza Hut, Haiti, which is a mega huge boba tea brand in China. MiHoYo was even accused of buying zombie accounts on Bilibili to inflate its review, with accounts such as these giving positive ratings to the game. There's examples here too of these weird accounts. Of course, it's not confirmed, but it's never going to be confirmed unless someone leaks it and loses their job, so let's not expect that. As I mentioned before, this was the final nail in the coffin. But the coffin was being hammered for a long time before this, I assure you, okay? <laughs> like, this is something that's been going on for a while. I mean, just recently, okay? Like, this month, mid-January, Genshin Impact announced that if you buy a PS5, okay, the console that comes with Genshin Impact, you get a feature that many people have been asking for for, like, forever. The Skin Selector, where you can claim any of the four-star skins for free. You can pick any skin on this list. And this is pretty much a list of every skin that's been available from the game release up until now, except for Deluxe skin, but why the hell would you want him? I hate him. And what's even worse, this is Chinese exclusive, okay? So even if you wanted to go out of your way to buy a PS5 for this, guess what? China only. And it's not like the Chinese players are happy about this either. This is a feature that they want as well, but a lot of people already have a PS5 or can't even afford one. I mean, dude, this is 3,600 yuan. The entire world is going through a recession and the household income in China doesn't make them the richest people in the world. So this is as tone deaf as what they said in the live stream. There's also the issue of Star Rail. I wouldn't even call it an issue. It's an issue for Genshin, but great for MiHoYo. Their most recent title has not even been out for a year and they've already given out probably more rewards than Genshin has in the last three years. Their 2.0 livestream was just today as I'm recording this video and it was insane. I mean, seriously, it's insane. They made a music video for it to hype it up. It was awesome. They're not giving out 10 wishes, they're giving out 20. How's that for your three by in-game mail, by the way? And a few weeks ago, they did something unthinkable. They gave out a free five-star character. And usually you'd expect them to give out a free five-star that's dog shit, that's terrible. Like Genshin did back with Aloy, with their partnership with PlayStation. This is a character no one uses, okay? She doesn't even have constellations. This is an incomplete character. But no, we were in a completely different situation because this one had drip marking. This one had promotional art. This one had so much hype built around him and had so much effort put into him as a character and ended up being very viable for the meta that it was actually a crazy good gift. And on top of this, what's most important to me is that they keep adding quality of life changes, things that Genshin players have wanted since release, and they show no sign of stopping. Now I'm truly wondering what they're gonna get for their one year anniversary, <laughs> because I highly doubt it'll be a disappointment. But all this to say that this was a gradual buildup. That tone deaf sentence during the live stream was the catalyst that triggered that buildup. But this dissatisfaction has been present for a while, especially when people realized that if Starrail can do it, why can't Genshin? What's the excuse here? We simply just can't find one anymore, except Copium. You decided to make a region based off of China, and your biggest event in the game that takes place every year has customs that are directly inspired by IRL China customs and traditions. And hey, no one forced you to screw up, you did it yourself! But because they screwed up on such an integral point of the year in such an important event, this all of a sudden went from a game problem to a national pride problem, giving me strong Vietnam flashbacks to the bunny girl incident. It's been two full years since the first anniversary catastrophe. And you've had such a long time to learn from your mistakes, but you haven't. What else is there to say? Apparently nothing, <laughs> because it's been more than a week since this has happened by the time this video goes up and Mioyo has said nothing about this. Complete radio silence. Now, of course, if you're a dog shit gaming tabloid journalist aiming to get cheap clicks, you'll make up the fact that they apologized. Because, hey, it's on the Chinese side of the internet. People reading the article won't really care, right? They modified it the next day, right? But the initial version said that Mihoyo apologized and that they've adjusted the rewards. No, they didn't. They didn't say anything. Another website, Gizmo China, said the same thing, no doubt inspired by the amazing journalistic integrity of Sportskita, saying, Hoyaverse issued an apology and promised to reassess and adjust the rewards. No. Buddy, you realize how much research I put into this? I went to Google and typed Genshin Impact Apology in Mandarin and I couldn't find anything. And if you don't believe me, there's a Chinese player who can confirm it too. On Tectone subreddit, who's probably watching this video right now because he has been farming hundreds of thousands of views on this controversy, a Chinese player came here and confirmed there is nothing on their doing it 
which is TikTok, but in China. Billy Billy or Weibo. And it seems like the source for this came from Sportskeeda, with multiple content creators quoting it from there, even though they didn't provide any sources. Typical gaming tabloid journalism. Sportskeeda, Dick Cerdo, all these dog sh** websites, that's what they do. But they didn't apologize. Now what do I think is gonna happen? Are we gonna have crazy changes? Is the game gonna have a change of management that will steer it in the right direction? No. I think just like the first anniversary, or just like the bunny girl incident in Honkai Impact 3rd, Mihoyo will simply send an in-game mail with 1600 parameters saying, sorry, also, the two 4-star skins that we're releasing for Shenhan Ganyu for the Lunar New Year, you can have one for free. Yeah, we're really sorry. Here's your booba outfit, enjoy. I could be wrong, right? But I totally see everyone calming down if they do this. But at this point, I'm convinced, either they're tone deaf to the point of being, quite literally, deaf to all the player surveys that they've given out and received, or Genshin Impact has such spaghetti code that implementing the smallest quality of life change, like collect all in expeditions, literally takes three years. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Either way, I'll continue watching the chaos as I always do. I'll continue laughing my ass off as I always do. And I'll continue making videos at the risk of being blacklisted by Genshin Impact as always. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you enjoyed the video. I love you. Mwah.